We are nearing the end of this idea journal that I have been putting together for the last seven videos. This is the final binder or tab that is going in and it will be the one in your upper right hand corner or this one right here. This one is going to be a real quick and easy video because I used an old almanac and I wanted to preserve the integrity of those pages that I pulled out. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope that you have gotten to know me a little bit and understand my style and how I'm kind of meandering through different mediums and techniques on an ongoing basis. If you like that, please subscribe and come join me for those adventures. Here are a few other places you can find me on the web. Let's get started with this final tab. As you know from previous videos, I started each of these tabs with book pages, texture paste, and a drag of raw umber and yellow ochre over the top of both. I am using a light texture paste and a pantina green and a pantina blue. On this one, I have chosen to use that pantina blue. Now, I am going back in with a stencil and stenciling in a black over the top of the raw umber, yellow ochre, and the stencil blue. And I'm using just half of this mandala stencil and putting it on the edge of this particular tab. You will also notice that I have punched three holes down the side of this tab as well as one hole in the upper right hand corner and I did that utilizing my crocodile. So I flipped this over and put the stencil on the other side. I wasn't overly crazy about how that stencil looked. It just kind of faded into the background. It didn't really give a good representation so I gessoed over the top of it and I'm just covering it up and speeding up the drying with the heat gun. And I'm going to come back with the stencil and stencil once again. So that's more obvious and a little more apparent now. And I think I'd like that better. But let's just see where we are. I'm going to go around the outside edge with some stays on black. I see the blue there and I think I could add a bit more blue and it would look good. So I'm going to flip this over and add the texture effect paste in the vintage blue or in the blue. And now I did, I actually stenciled this off camera, but just to illustrate what I did, I had this other stencil that I felt would add or darken up where I had gessoed. So I pulled that in and used the raw umber to lay that stencil down and kind of overlapped that first stencil that I had laid down. I'm just trying to make myself happy with the back side of this. And we're getting closer, but I'm not quite there yet. I have this napkin that I received in Happy Mail a long time ago. I wish I could remember who sent it to me and I would thank you right now, but I've had it for a while and I would like to use it. So it's a three ply napkin. I'm pulling off the bottom two plies and using that top ply and just adhering it with the glue and water mixture or the homemade Mod Podge. So we'll get this affixed to the front or the, this side and allow that to dry and then trim, trim that off. There, it's nice and trim. OK, 
cover up the or close up the texture paste so it doesn't dry out. And I want to just go back through those holes and make sure I didn't clog them up with a napkin or anything else that I was doing. So I just wanted to open those holes back up once again. And now I want to add this napkin. I'm going to put it across the entire backside where we had covered up, added the gesso, and I was hoping that my stencil would show through here, but it it really didn't. It does if you look at it very close and if you see it in person, you can see kind of a shadow of that stencil, which I'm okay with that. I, I kind of like that. So I'm going to lay this napkin down. And I don't want to destroy the rest of that napkin because I think I can likely use it elsewhere. So I'm wetting my paintbrush with a little bit of water and just going around the outside edge so I can pull that napkin away very tenderly. And we'll let this dry and then trim it up. And now I'm just coming back with some of that green patina texture paste through the center of that napkin and a little bit of that blue patina texture paste as well. So now I'm, I'm starting to, to really enjoy or like the way this is, is starting to look. So a little bit of stays on black around the outside edges. And I am going to utilize the brown paper bag to deliver the title and likely the quote on this tab. And I have this old book that we've been using and there's all kinds of tables and different things in here. So I'm gonna pull one of those tables out and adhere it to the front. Just a little bit of that book page up top as well. That book page has a nice aged vintage look to it. That's why I chose the, the craft paper because it kind of blends in well. And I have these two little gears that I think I would like to use here. Now I will warn you, I'm going to glue these gears on and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull them off. So just a forewarning, I didn't edit this out because the gears appear in some of the photos and then they don't appear. But what I did is I tied the gear or glued the gears on and then I decided to do something else with this tab, which you'll see here in a minute. And I had to take the gears off for that, do what I wanted to do, and then reinstall the gears. Now I had this old almanac from 1958 that I'm flipping through and I'm trying to find something that I can put on the back. And I think I've landed on this horoscope page that I'm gonna utilize. There's all kinds of crazy things inside that almanac. But we'll stick that on the back and we'll just go around the outside edges with the vintage photo and then come back and glue that down. I'm just distressing it a bit more. We'll glue that down with some glitter glue and get that adhered to the back of this tab. Now I'm going to flip that over again. But once again, keep in mind, I'm getting ready to tear those gears off. So pretend the gears are not there yet. So I'm off to get my embossing folder. I've torn the gears off and given this a good coat of the hard coat. 
and I'm putting into place where I want to put my titles. And now we'll stick this in the embossing folder and I'm off to the big shot. And this puts a very nice texture into this tab. And to reveal that texture, I just am brushing over it with that black stays on ink. And now I have this little um, tag. It was it was just a tag that I'm not sure what I was using it for, but we're going to use that as well. This is just where I'm placing the random DIY up at the top. Which will be the title for this tab. Just clearing those holes again. This one could use a little punch. I think there was enough of that napkin on the back. I had to punch through it again. And there's that little tag I was talking about earlier. So we will take the vintage photo and go around the outside edge of that. And I'm pulling out my letter stamps and I am just selecting DIY and I'm going to stamp the DIY on there. Now for me to get that in line, I'm just going to use my painter's tape and painters tape those together and then stamp them all just like that. And that just makes it easier for me. And I have that black elastic thread that I pulled off of something else that I'm going to use to adhere that to this piece of fabric that I am looping through that hole. So I'm using that to loop my DIY tag on. And it's not wanting to be compliant. So I think I finally have it tied into a knot. I apologize for the lengthy footage of me tying a knot. But there we go. And now that will just dangle down atop the, the uh, tab. And now to finish it off, a little gilding wax around the outside edges, a bit on that almanac page. And as always, I'm using the copper and bronze gilding wax, and that completes the random DIY last tab of this book. So we have completed all of the tabs and are ready to come back in the next video. We'll bind it like this and get it ready to be utilized. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey of creating this book. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed and your comments I am really enjoying and those likes do help my channel. So again, thank you and bye for now. I'll see you when we bind this book.